Pierre Gaspard Chamet, the 24th of May 1763 to the 13th of April 1794, was a French politician of the revolutionary period. Topic: Biography. Topic: Early activities. Chamet was born in Nevers, France, 24 May 1763, into a family of shoemakers who wanted him to enter the church. However he did not have a vocation and instead sought his fortune as a cabin boy. After only reaching the rank of helmsman, he returned to Nevers to study his main interests, botany and science. He also studied surgery and made a long voyage in the company of an English doctor, serving as his secretary. He then became surgeon to the Brothers of Charity at Moulins. Chamet studied medicine at the University of Paris in 1790, but gave up his career in medicine at the start of the Revolution. Chamet began his political career as member of the Jacobin Club editing the Progressive Revolutions de Paris Journal from 1790. His oratory skills proved him a valuable spokesperson of the Cordelier Club, and more importantly, the sans-culotte movement in the Parisian neighborhood sections. In August 1792 Chamet became the chief procurator of the Commune of Paris, as member of the Paris Commune during the insurrection of 10 August 1792, he was delegated to visit the prisons, with full power to arrest suspects. On 31 October 1792 he was elected president of the Commune and was re-elected in the municipal on 2 December of that same year. Presidency of the Commune His conduct, oratorical talent, and the fact that his private life was considered beyond reproach, all made him influential, and he was elected president of the Commune, defending the municipality at the bar of the National Convention on 31 October 1792. Re-elected in the municipal elections of 2 December 1792, he was soon given the functions of procuror of the commune, and contributed with success to the enrollments of volunteers in the army by his appeals to the population of Paris. Chamet held strong anti-monarchy views. He led a deputation from the commune and argued before the National Convention that failing to punish Louis XVI for his crimes was causing high prices and the fall of the assignat. Further, Chamet held a strong opinion about the fate of Louis XVI after his fall. He was greatly outspoken in his demand for the king's blood. Chamet's thesis was that as long as Louis XVI went unpunished prices would remain high, and shortages and the profiteering that created them, which he assumed to be the work of the royalists, would go unchecked. Chamet was also a leading and vocal opponent of the Girondists. He was one of the instigators of the attacks of 31 May and of 2 June 1793 on the Girondists. Chamet and Jacques Ebert acted as prosecutors on behalf of the tribunal which tried the Girondists in October 1793. Chamet made a leading contribution to establishing the Reign of Terror. In early September 1793, there was fear and unrest in Paris over prices, food shortages, war, and fears of a royalist betrayal. On 4 September, Hebert appealed to the sections to join the Commune in petitioning the National Convention with radical demands. The next day, led by Chamet and the mayor of Paris, Patch, crowds of citizens filled the convention. Chamet stood up on a table to declare that we now have open war between the rich and the poor and urged the immediate mobilization of the revolutionary army to go into the countryside, seize food supplies from hoarders and exact punishments on them. Robespierre was presiding over the convention's sessions that day, and Chamet's demands, together with the shock of the recent betrayal of Toulon to the British, prompted the convention to decree that terror will be the order of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Role in the dechristianization of France Chamet is considered one of the ultra-radical enragés of the French Revolution. He demanded the formation of a revolutionary army which was to force avarice and greed to yield up the riches of the earth in order to redistribute wealth, and feed troops and the urban populations. He is associated much more with his views on the dechristianization movement, however. Chamet was an ardent critic of Christianity, which he charged with consisting of ridiculous ideas that have been very helpful to legitimize despotism. 
In his views, he was heavily influenced by atheist and materialist writers Paul Dolbach, Denis Diderot and Jean Meslier. Chomet saw religion as a relic of superstitious eras that did not reflect the intellectual achievements of the Age of Enlightenment. Indeed, for Chomet, church and counterrevolution were one and the same. Thus, he proceeded to pressure several priests and bishops into abjuring their positions. Chomet organized a festival of reason on 10 November 1793, which boasted a goddess of reason, portrayed by an actress, on an elevated platform in the Notre Dame Cathedral. Chomet was so passionately involved in the dechristianization process that in December 1792 he even publicly changed his name from Pierre Gaspard Chomet to Anaxagoras Chomet. He stated his reason for changing his name that I was formerly called Pierre Gaspard Chamet because my godfather believed in the saints. Since the revolution I have taken the name of a saint who was hanged for his republican principles, it has been suggested that his criticism was also influenced by the church's stance on homosexual relations. <laughs> <laughs> Downfall Chomet's ultra-radical ideas on the economy, society and religion set him at odds with Robespierre and the powerful circle around him and official opinion began to turn against him and the like-minded Ebertists. In September 1793, Robespierre made a speech denouncing dechristianization as aristocratic and immoral. Fabre d'Aiglantine, himself under suspicion, produced a report for the Committee of Public Safety, alleging Chomet's involvement in an anti government plot, revealed by Chabot. Although Chabot had never named Chomet himself, in the early spring of 1794, Chomet increasingly became target of allegations that he was a counter revolutionary. Ebert and his associates planned an armed uprising to overthrow Robespierre, but Chomet, along with Henriot, refused to take part. When the Ebertists were arrested on 4 March, Chomet was originally spared, but on 13 March he too was arrested. The other Ebertists were executed on 24 March 1794 but Chomet was held in prison until found guilty of taking part in the prison plot at Luxembourg Palace along with an unlikely group of co-conspirators including Lucille de Molins, wife of the recently executed Camille de Molins, Françoise Hebert, wife of the recently executed Ebert, Goebel, former Bishop of Paris, Arthur Dillon and an assortment of other prisoners of various types. All of the alleged conspirators were sentenced to death on the morning of 13 April and guillotined that same afternoon. <inaudible> <inaudible> Radical philosophy Pierre Gaspard Chomet's legacy mainly consists of his ultra-radical philosophies that were regarded as excessive even by his contemporary colleagues. Especially his convictions on the uselessness of religion were frowned upon by deist Robespierre and most other moderate Montagnards and they ultimately led to his execution. <reviewing>, Reviewing Saint Martin In 1790 Chomet reviewed the work of Saint Martin, a French Catholic philosopher wishing for a theocratic society in which the most devout people would commission and guide the rest of the population. The review provides a substantiated outline of Chomet's philosophies. He criticizes Saint Martin's ideal due to its similarity to France's feudal order before the revolution in which the rule of the monarch was legitimized by the divine right of kings. The review soon develops into a much broader affront towards religion, though. Chomet calls all Christians enemies of reason and calls their ideas ridiculous. He wonders over whom to get more embarrassed, him who believes he can deceive humans in the 18th century with such farces or him who has the weakness to let himself be deceived. He moves on to criticize the very notion of free will as construct that authorizes Christianity to proscribe certain unmoral actions. His criticism is reminiscent of Friedrich Nietzsche who would denounce Christianity on many of the same grounds 80 years later. Just like Nietzsche, Chomet emphasizes a greater reliance on our instincts and a greater embracing of the apparent world, instead of Christianity's concern with the afterlife. In his philosophy, he is rather critical of human beings stating that everyone knows that humans are nothing more than what education makes of them. And thus, if one wants them just, one must furnish them with notions of fairness, not ideas from seventh heaven.
because the sources of all of humans' grief are ignorance and superstition. 